All right, in this video we want to address the role of temperature and its effect on bacterial cell growth. So let's start by identifying the terminology we use to discuss what temperature does to bacteria. So we're going to begin with these cardinal temperatures. And these are just uh, a, a set of temperatures that we can apply to any microbe to describe the effects it has on its growth. And so here I'm showing you a growth curve for a microorganism. So the line represents the growth rate. The higher the line gets, the better the organism is growing. And then the lower the line gets, the worse the, worse the organism is growing. And if there is no line here, that indicates that the organism cannot grow. So for any bacteria, we could test its growth in the laboratory at a whole bunch of different temperatures and generate a graph just like this one. And then using that graph, we can identify these cardinal temperatures. The first cardinal temperature we're going to identify is what temperature the bacteria grows the absolute best at. We're going to call that the optimum temperature. After we identify an optimum temperature, we might add what is the highest temperature at which the bacteria can grow at all. So at this temperature, there's a little bit of growth, and any hotter than that, the microbe is uh, incapable of growing. We're going to call that temperature, the highest temperature at which we can detect any growth, the maximum. And then on the left-hand side of the graph, we're going to identify the lowest temperature at which we can detect any growth. Colder than that, we can't detect any growth. So this temperature we're going to call the minimum. So these are, our, are the cardinal temperatures for bacteria. The optimum, where they grow best. The maximum, the hottest temperature where they can possibly grow. And the minimum, the coldest temperature where they can possibly grow. And then we can use those temperatures to classify these microorganisms. Before we discuss the classifications that we use based on these temperatures, let's think about why these temperatures exist. Right? So a bacteria is trying to grow in its environment. It's collecting nutrients. It's doing chemical reactions to build new cellular components. In general, a bacterial cell is going to uh, double in size, and then it'll divide and become two cells. So again, at the optimum temperature, that process is happening as fast as it possibly can. That means inside the cell, these enzymatic reactions, the building of new cellular components, are happening at the absolute maximum rate. So that's what leads to the fastest possible growth. Now, if we think about what's happening at the maximum as things get hotter and potentially too hot for the bacteria to grow, what changes? So at these temperatures, higher temperatures, the main effect that we observe on cells is that their proteins denature. And denature is just another way of saying unfolding. And denatured proteins do not function. So at, a, at the maximum temperature or above, there's so much protein denaturation that the cell's proteins can't do any functions and the cell cannot survive. So here the cell dies at any temperature above the maximum. Um, there's also heat effects on the membranes and it can cause lysis of cells. But for our purposes, we're gonna focus on this protein denaturation. Without functional proteins, Cells can't perform cellular processes, and the cell dies. All right, so at the optimum, all these chemical reactions are happening as fast as they possibly can, and we get quick growth. At the maximum temperature, proteins denature, and the bacteria dies. How about at the minimum temperature? So at the minimum temperature, things are getting really cold. And at this point, the membrane will become solidified, uh, transport processes, moving things around, get really slow. I would describe at this minimum temperature that chemical reactions, cellular processes, are happening so slowly that the bacteria can no longer replicate. So if we think about increasing the temperature from the minimum towards the maximum, we get this steady increase in the growth rate. And 
if at the minimum chemical reactions are happening too slow for growth to occur, then as the temperature increases, the rate of chemical reactions increases. It gets a little bit better and the bacteria grows a little bit better. Warm it up a little bit more, the bacteria grows better still. Warm it up a little bit more, the bacteria grows better still until you get to the optimum. Again, after the optimum, you start increasing the temperature and proteins begin to denature and the bacteria grows worse. So it's my hope that we will understand the terminology around minimum, maximum, and optimum, and then that we can explain why we observe the growth patterns we observe at each temperature. Again, the main reason we want this terminology, especially the optimum temperature, is so that we can then classify organisms based on the temperatures at which they grow best. So here, let's discuss the classifications that we can give to bacteria based on their optimum temperature. So here you can see a graph, again, with the temperature at the bottom and then growth curves for these different types of bacteria. And you can see that bacteria sort of peak. They have the best possible growth at particular temperatures. And let's start with this group we call the mesophiles. Mesophiles have an optimum temperature somewhere between 20 and 45 degrees Celsius. Many mesophiles have an optimum temperature right around 37 degrees Celsius. That's really important to us because 37 degrees Celsius is body temperature. And so it's these mesophiles that thrive in the human body. And it is the mesophiles that make up our microbiome. They are all the microbes that are living in and on your body right now. And it's mesophiles that are potential pathogens. They are bacteria that, if we are exposed to them, could make us sick. So mesophiles are a really important group of uh, microorganisms classified together based on which temperature they grow best at. And again, for a microbiology class, they're the most important group. For a microbiology class where we're considering human health, they're the most important group. Uh, let's look at this group, the psychrophiles, next. Psychrophiles have an optimum temperature somewhere around 15 degrees Celsius, but they can grow from below zero degrees Celsius freezing and up to maybe 20 degrees Celsius. Psychrophiles are organisms that like colder temperatures. For a, health, a human health-focused microbiology class, psychrophiles don't represent uh, much of a risk to human health because our body is too warm for them to grow on. So they don't represent a group of human pathogens. All right, let's head the other way. We get this next group, the thermophiles. Thermophiles have an optimum temperature of between 50 and 80 degrees Celsius, so getting quite warm. So they love that temperature. Um, again, for a microbiology class focusing on human health, Thermophiles also don't represent human pathogens because our body is not hot enough to support their growth. Thermophiles are very interesting microorganisms out in the world. Uh, we can develop interesting or useful tools from uh, their biological molecules. Uh, so they're super important and super interesting, but again, they're unlikely to make a person sick. And then lastly, on the far right, we've got the hyperthermophiles. Hyperthermophiles have an optimum growth temperature somewhere between 80 and 110 degrees Celsius. Again, this is a super interesting group of microorganisms, not because they might make a human sick, but because they have uh, evolved cells and molecules that can survive boiling temperatures. So 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water boils. For the longest time, scientists thought that nothing could survive at those temperatures. But indeed, there are these hyperthermophiles who have adaptations that allow them to survive at these extraordinarily high temperatures. Studying them is really interesting and may lead to some really important discoveries that can help humans uh, solve all sorts of problems and develop interesting tools. So those are the major 
groups of microorganisms, again, classes of microorganisms that we create based on their optimum growth temperature. And so that's all the terminology we need. Again, my goal for you as a student is that you can apply these pieces of terminology, that you could look at a graph and interpret the information and then report back the optimum, maximum, or minimum temperatures or the correct classification for an organism based on its optimum temperature. Before we end, I just want to point out two critical details I want you to take away. And again, that relates to the temperature effect on the bacteria itself. And so I think there's two particularly important effects you need to be aware of. The first is that any temperature greater than the maximum growth temperature is what we call microbicidal. It's lethal. It kills microbes. Microbes die because their proteins denature. Again, denatured proteins are unfolded proteins. Unfolded proteins are non-functional and they can't refold. So high temperatures denature proteins and that kills bacteria. Okay, so again, any time a bacterial cell is exposed to a temperature above its own maximum temperature, it will be killed. And that's really important to recognize as that gives us ways to try to control these microorganisms and make sure that we don't unnecessarily expose people to them and risk getting people sick. All right, the other thing I want you to be well aware of is that temperatures below the minimum, so cold temperatures, are what we call microbostatic. So not microbicidal, not lethal, but microbostatic. Microbostatic means it stops growth but potentially without killing the microbe. This happens because the cellular processes are happening too slowly to support growth. But again, these microbes are not dead. So we can take a bacteria and put it in the refrigerator at a cold temperature and it will not grow. But as soon as we take that bacteria out of the refrigerator and let it warm back up closer to its optimum temperature, it will begin growing again. And I think that seeing that critical difference between high temperatures killing cells and low temperatures only putting their growth on hold is an important realization for you to have. So we'll stop there. As always, I hope you'll let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to talking to you all in class or on the discussion boards.